Welcome everybody to Storytime from the Milledgeville Public Library of Illinois. The story we have for you today comes from France and it is a story about a young woman and how she had to learn to look beyond what someone looked like on the outside. This is the story of Beauty and the Beast. <clears throat> Once long ago, there was a merchant. Now the merchant's wife sadly had died many years before but the merchant had six children to keep him company and to make his days happy. He had three sons and three daughters. One day, however, the merchant found that after a string of very bad luck type of situations, pirates and storms at sea, that his final ships had been destroyed in a storm at sea. He had no ships left to send off to find goods in other countries and to bring back and sell in the market. And he had no money left. He wasn't sure what he was going to tell his children. He felt very badly about it, for he was going to have to go home and tell them that they were going to have to sell their beautiful large home in the city and go move to a small farm in the country that he still owned. Well, when he came home and told his children, none of them were very happy about it. But his youngest daughter, Beauty, was the most quiet about it. For you see, Beauty was very much like her mother had been. She would find the good in every situation as quickly as she could. And she liked to work. Not always work very hard, but she did like to work and she preferred the country to the city. So to her, it would not be too difficult to move out of the city and into the country. Her two sisters were not at all happy about having to move out of the city and into the country. They, they were very beautiful, and since their father had been so very rich, they thought they were better than most of the other people in the city, and therefore they were better than most of the young men who had come and tried to, to, to get them to agree to marry them. They had turned them all down. But now, now that their father had no money and they were going to have to go live in a farm in the country, their prospects and chances of getting married were very small indeed. They were very mm -hmm. upset as they said, we are not bred to marry farmers. We don't want to move to the country. Well, the merchant's sons were not entirely happy about it either, for they were not used to hard work. But they soon followed Beauty's example and began helping their father to sort through their things and figure out which ones they should take with them to the country, what would be the most useful and which things they should sell to try to pay some of the debts that the merchant owed. And so while Beauty and her brothers sorted all of their things and packed them up and got them ready to go to the country, Beauty's two sisters sat around and complained about having to leave the city. And up until the very end, they argued with their father that they could go stay with this friend or that friend and they would not have to go to the city. But in the end, father said no, they must come with the family. And so they were forced to move to the country with the rest of the family. Every single day, the merchant and his three sons and beauty would get up early and they would go out and they would work in the farm fields. For if they wanted to eat, they needed to grow their own food. They could tend to their cows and get the milk from the cows and they had some chickens and they would get eggs from the chickens and they would grow what they needed in their garden and out in the farm fields. And every day, Beauty's two sisters would get up later than everybody else. And whenever they were asked to help with any of the chores, they would say, I can't wash the dishes, that's servant's work. If, if I wash the dishes, my hands will get all red and dry and chapped, and who would want to marry me then? Well, I can't go out and work in the fields. Oh, that's men's work, working in the fields. What if one of my friends should happen to ride by and see me working out in the fields? I can't do that. And so Beauty's two sisters would spend most of the day sitting around in the house complaining about how 
horrible their lives were and not doing any of the work. Beauty's brothers, they tended to say that it was all right since the girls were not very strong. Beauty was different. Beauty liked living in the country and she was good at, at working and, and she was very good with the animals. Well, one day they had a visitor on their farm it was a friend of their father's, and he had come expressly to tell them that he had heard that several of the merchant's ships had come to port in a neighboring town, and that the merchant should go to claim what was on those ships as soon as possible so that he could get some money back from those ships. And so the merchant went into the house, and he began to pack. And Beauty's sisters, they fluttered around him, oh, father, Father, we want you to bring us back wonderful, the most beautiful dresses ever and jewels, Father. We need jewels. Oh, and Father, when we go back to the city, we should ride in a grand carriage so that everyone will see us and be, be very astonished at how beautiful the carriage is and how great we are. So you must bring us back a fine carriage as well. Well, Father was very hopeful, too, that there would be some good money to come from the cargo on his ships but he did not think there would be quite that much money. And so he promised Beauty's sisters that he would bring, her back, bring them back beautiful dresses. And what would you have, Beauty? He asked her. And she turned from where she was packing up his traveling clothes and she said, Oh, Father, I do not need anything except for you to return home safely. And her father said, Now, come now, Beauty. There must be something that you would like me to bring to you. Well, Beauty really couldn't think of anything that she needed, and there was very little that she wanted other than her father to return home safely. But in order to stop the conversation and to stop her sisters, who were laughing and giggling about how she didn't want anything at all because she was so happy to be a servant working in a farm field in the country, Beauty looked at her father and she said, Yes, father, there is one little thing that I should like. We don't see any roses here in the country. If you could bring me a rose, that would be very nice. I shall find you the best rose that I possibly can, said her father. And he packed up his things and he climbed on his horse with his friend beside him on his own horse. And they rode off. Well, everyone in the family was very hopeful that there would be some good money to come from this shipment. But when the merchant arrived in the neighboring town, he and his friend found that that was not going to be the case. The ships were badly damaged, and most of the cargo had been damaged as well. Anything that was valuable had been quickly snapped up by all of the people that the merchants still owed money to. And so... There really wasn't anything there. He wasn't even going to be able to buy his daughters even a small amount of cloth, much less fine dresses. And so sadly, the merchant said goodbye to his friend, and he got on his horse and he began to ride home. But as he rode, the sky began to darken, and the wind began to blow, and it got rather cold. First it started to rain, and then it started to snow. And pretty soon, the merchant could not see where he was going, and he got lost in the forest. He was just starting to think that if he didn't find somewhere to take shelter soon, he might freeze to death in the night out here. When he saw a light ahead of him, and he turned his horse towards the light, and they went toward it. And when they got closer, he found much to his surprise that it was coming from the windows of a great big palace sitting right there in the middle of the woods. It was the oddest thing he had ever seen, but he really was looking for shelter. And so he rode up to the palace and he climbed off of his horse and he walked up and he knocked on the door. And when he did, the door unlatched and swung open well, the merchant was rather surprised. He looked around for who had opened the door, but he couldn't see anybody. And so he walked into the palace and he walked into the first room that he saw, hoping that perhaps there would be someone there. 
<clears throat> what he saw instead was a blazing fire in a big fireplace and sitting beside it a little table set for one person with a chair. There was soup and there was freshly made bread and there was, there was warm drink and oh, it, it looked delicious. The merchant looked all over. He even went back out and looked into the hallway again, but he didn't see anybody. And so he thought, well, perhaps, perhaps this food is set here for a weary traveler such as myself. And so he went down and he sat down and he began to eat. When he was done eating, suddenly he remembered his poor horse that had been standing outside in the cold this whole time. And he went out the door of the castle to find it but it wasn't there. And then he heard a noise of it whinnying nearby and he followed the noise and he found his horse standing in a stable with the saddle off and all brushed down and warm for the night, chewing on some sweet smelling hay. Well, the merchant thought that was a bit odd too, but perhaps there had been a servant that had taken the horse into the stable and he just hadn't seen him because he had been inside eating. And so he went back into the house, looking around, trying to find someone. He opened the door. He was walking down a hallway, and suddenly a door opened in front of him. And so he went into the room looking for someone. But instead, what he found in the room was a very comfortable-looking bed. And it was already turned down and ready for someone to sleep in. Well, the merchant didn't want to take someone else's bed. But he figured in a palace this size, there would definitely be another bed somewhere. And so, since he was very tired now, and his stomach was very full and comfortable, he decided to climb into the bed and go to sleep. When he woke up the next morning, the merchant found, as he looked around, that he was in a very beautiful bedroom. And there, on the table by the bedside, or by the fireside, was porridge and hot rolls and some fruit and some juice and some milk and a beautiful little breakfast all laid out for him. And the merchant thought, my, how generous the Lord of this palace is. Well, after he had finished eating breakfast, he went out wandering the hallways of the palace, looking for someone, anyone in a palace this size there must be servants. He didn't find anyone. And so he went out into the gardens, thinking that perhaps the master of the house might be walking out in the gardens in the morning, as he had liked to do when he had a big house in the country. But he still didn't see anyone. And it was very odd. But as he was walking through the garden, suddenly he smelled a very familiar and a very wonderful smell. It was the smell of roses. And he followed the smell and he saw the most beautiful little rose garden. And then he remembered what Beauty had asked him for, just one rose. And so he reached out and he broke a rose off of the nearest rose bush. As soon as he had done that, he heard the loudest, most terrifying roar he had ever heard in his life. It was so frightening that all he could do was fall to his knees and cover his ears and try to block out the loud sound. When the roaring stopped, the merchant looked up and there standing in front of him was the most frightening thing he had ever seen. It stood like a man. It wore clothing like a man. But its hands were covered in fur and ended in claws. Its feet were the same, and its face was the face of a wild animal with fangs and everything. It was very scary. It was a beast of some kind. The merchant didn't know what kind, but it was definitely a beast. And the beast looked at the merchant and he said, I gave you food and shelter and a warm place to sleep and how do you repay me by stealing one of my roses for that you shall die oh no 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 please please said the merchant please don't 
kill me. My children are waiting at home for me. If you kill me, they will become orphans. I do not want that to happen to them. Please let me explain. And he told the beast the whole story. How he had lost his money and they had moved to the country and then they had found out the ships had come in and his daughters wanted dresses and jewels and Beauty just wanted a rose. And when he went to get the ships, he found out the ships weren't any good. And so he didn't have any money for the dresses and the jewels, but at least he thought he could give Beauty the rose that she wanted. Well, the beast had been listening to this whole story. And when he was done, he said, well, merchant, I think I have a solution. Your daughter who wanted the rose, you will go and you will bring her back here and she will stay with me. And if she stays with me of her own free will, then I will not kill you and I will let you go on your way. Well, the merchant did not want to bring his daughter here to this beast, for he was sure the beast would kill her and eat her. The beast said, do not argue with me, go. At the palace gates, your horse waits for you with a, a chest that I am sending with you as a gift for your family. Take the rose and go. Tell your daughter the story. In three days time, you must come back. If you do not come back, merchant, I will come find you. So do not think that you can take your daughter and run. You must come back alone or you must come back with your daughter. I am sending my black horse with you for your daughter to ride on the return trip. Well, the merchant was terrified and he wanted to argue, but the beast, he did not look like someone that you should argue with. And so the merchant stood up and he took the rose and he went to the door of the palace and there he found his horse with a chest strapped onto its side and another black horse standing beside it. And the merchant climbed onto his horse and he rode home sadly. When he got home, his children were excited to see him and to see the large chest, for they thought there would be something wonderful inside. But the merchant looked so sad. And Beauty said, Father, what is wrong? And so he told them the whole story. And at the end, Beauty said to him, Father, of course I will go back with you and stay with this beast. Well, Beauty's brothers were not at all happy to hear that. In fact, they wanted to go right that minute back and find that palace and kill the beast so that no one would have to worry about him ever again. But Beauty she told them she did not think that was a very good idea, for one of them might be hurt or killed in the process, and that would mean that father would have a very hard time working the farm without them. Beauty's sisters were listening to this whole story, and they really didn't mind if Beauty left, for they thought that she made them look bad. For they had told her that a lady didn't work in the fields, and yet... Beauty worked in the fields, and she was still every bit as beautiful and graceful and ladylike as her sisters. So her sisters didn't really like her very much. So they forced out false tears from their eyes and told her how they didn't want her to go. But in their hearts, they were thinking that they wouldn't miss her very much. Well, for the next two days, Father argued with Beauty for she insisted she would go to live with the beast, and father did not want her to go. And her brothers argued with her that they would go and kill the beast, and she told them that was not a good idea. And finally, when the third day came, Beauty got up early in the morning, and she went with her father, and they climbed down the horses, and they went back to the beast's palace, for Beauty refused to let anyone else go in her stead. She would go. She had been the one who asked for the rose. She would pay the price. Well, when the merchant and beauty arrived back at the palace, they found the door opened in front of them, just as it had when the merchant came by himself. And when they went into the little room, 
With the blazing fire in the fireplace, they found the table set for two. Beauty sat down at the table and she said, Wow, Father, this is a fine meal. I have not had one so fine in all my life. The Lord of this castle must be very generous indeed. And so Beauty and her father ate their dinner. Well, as they finished their dinner, the beast came in from the gardens. And he said, Well, merchants, I see that you, our daughter, has come with you. Has she come of her own free will? She has, said the merchant, even though I told her not to come, even though I said I would come alone, she insisted upon coming. That is well and good, said the beast. And what is your name, young lady? And she said, my name is Beauty, my lord. She was a little frightened of him, for his face was very frightening. But she had noticed something. Although his face was frightening and the claws and the fur were a bit strange, his eyes looked very sad. And she thought to herself that probably he was rather lonely living here all by himself, for father had told her that there did not seem to be another person in the entire place. And so the beast said, and you will stay with me in your father's place. And Beauty said, Yes, my lord, I will stay here. And the beast said, Very well. Then everything in this castle is yours, and everything here will do your bidding, including me. And you are now the mistress of this place. I ask only one thing, that we always speak truth here, and so I ask that you simply call me Beast. Yes, beast, I can do that, she said. Merchant, said the beast, you will stay here tonight and you will go home in the morning. There are three chests here along the wall. You and Beauty are free to fill them with as much gold and jewels as you possibly can to take back to your family. Well, the merchant wasn't entirely sure he wanted that, for the chest the beast had sent home had already been quite full of silver, and he would have quite enough money to live off of on that. But Beauty insisted that she would help her father fill the trunks, and so the beast bade them good night, and he left. Beauty and the merchant spent the entire night filling the trunks with as much gold and jewels as they possibly could find, and it did not matter how much they poured into them, there was always room for more. The merchant said to Beauty, the beast must be making fun of me. There is no way that my horse will be able to carry these three chests. They are so full of gold and jewels. There is no way that the horse will be able to carry them. But in the morning, the merchant's horse stood outside the gate of the palace with all three chests strapped to his back, carrying them as if they weighed nothing. And Beauty went out with her father and she bade him goodbye, and she gave him a hug and a kiss, and then he climbed on his horse, and he rode home. Beauty turned round, and she went back into the palace, and she decided to go exploring, for it was quite a large palace, and she had nothing else to do with her time. And so she began to wander through the palace, and on one of the doors, as she came up to it, the door opened, and she noticed that there was a sign on the door that said, Beauty's Room. And so she went into the room and she found the most beautiful bedroom she had ever seen. And the closets and the dressers were stuffed with the most beautiful dresses and jewels and clothing and everything of the best quality. Well, Beauty was a little surprised by that, but she thought that the beast might be pleased to see her wearing the gifts that he had brought for her. And so she changed out of her plain working dress that she wore to work on the farm into one of the fine silk dresses. And then she went back out in the hall and she began to explore again. She explored the pa palace for quite some time until finally climbing up a long, twisting, spirally staircase, the top of one of the towers, she found a beautiful little room. It was lined with wall. The walls were just lined with shelves and shelves of books and beauty loved to read. 
And there was a beautiful window with a little window seat where she could sit and read a book or she could look out and see across the forest and see all of the things in the distance and the birds flying out of the trees. And in the palace tower room, there was a little cage with a little red bird in it that sang very sweetly. And so Beauty found that on many days, she would find her way to the tower room and she would read a book and she would let the little bird out of his cage. And even when the window was open, the little bird would fly around the tower room and never would leave the tower. He always just stayed inside the tower and he sang her happy little songs. Well, as the days were passing, Beauty found that they fell into a routine. At the beginning of her time there, the beast had come to join her for supper one night. He didn't eat, but he just sat and talked to her while she ate. And she was trying to learn a little bit more about the beast, and so she asked him what he did with his days. And he said to her, please do not ask me that. But she really did want to know. And so finally the beast said, I hunt, my lady. I am an animal, I am a beast, I must eat, and I cannot chew politely as you do. After that, Beauty realized that perhaps she should not ask the beast those sorts of questions, for he had looked so sad when he had told her that. So after that, she simply talked about what her life had been like in the city and what it had been like in the country, what she had done that day, the things she had read in some of the books in the tower, and she no longer asked the beast questions about himself. But every night, as the beast was leaving, he would say to her, Beauty, will you marry me? And she would say, Oh, beast, I am sorry, but I cannot, for I do not love you. And then the beast would sigh, and he would say, Very well, then, good night, and he would leave. And Beauty would very eagerly go to her bedroom, for you see, Beauty had the most beautiful dreams when she was in the palace. She would dream that she was out in the gardens of the palace, sitting next to a beautiful shimmering pond, and a prince would come and join her there, and they would talk and talk all night long. And the prince told her the story of his life, how he had been a great prince, and he had been so proud, and he had thought he was so handsome and so perfect and so much better than everyone else. And one day, an old hag had come to the palace, and she had knocked on the door looking for a little bit of food and some shelter for the night, and perhaps a coin or two to help her on her way. And she had been so ugly and so old that he had sent her away without any food, without any shelter, and without even a small coin. And then the old crone had said to him before she left, you think that you are so wonderful, but you will find that you are in fact quite lonely. And until someone comes who can find the beauty within you, not the beauty without, the beauty within, you will be very lonely indeed. And he really wasn't sure what she meant, but when he went back to his palace, he had found that it was empty. Everyone was gone, and he had been alone ever since. And when the prince was done talking with her and would leave at night, Beauty would hear a voice in her head that would say, you must look beyond the outside and find the happiness within. And so Beauty's days went by. She would spend them up in the tower or wandering about the castle or out in the gardens. And then at night the beast would come and he would sit with her while she ate and he would ask her to marry him. And she would say to him, I'm sorry, but I cannot. I do not love you. And then she would go to bed and dream of her prince. But one night, after several months of this, the beast asked her at night to marry him. And when she gave him her customary answer, the beast looked very sad. And when she went to her bed that night, she fell asleep and she found herself by the shore of the pond out in the gardens. But the prince never came. She wandered about calling for him, but he didn't come. 
And then an old woman showed up, rowing a boat across the pond, and she called out to Beauty and she said, You silly girl, I would have thought that you could see better than you do. The prince cannot come to you any more. And so Beauty had lost the prince. She still dreamed of the garden at night, but the prince was not there. Well, after a few more months, one day Beauty went up into the tower room to read a book, and she found something strange there. On the table was a little mirror that she could hold in her hand. She had never seen it before, but when she picked it up and looked into it, suddenly she saw her father. He was lying in his bed and he did not look well. And she could see her brothers and her sisters sitting there by his bedside. And she could tell that her father was very sick. She was rather worried about this. And that night when the beast came and joined her for supper, she had brought the mirror down and she showed it to him and she asked him what it was. And he told her that it was a magic mirror. And that only those who were pure of heart could see into it and see anything other than themselves. Those who were pure of heart could look into it and see things that were happening in other places. Beauty was very upset, for now she realized that her father was very ill, and she begged the beast to let her be free to go back to him and, and to help him, and he, she knew he would get better if she stayed, if she went and she visited with him for a little while. Well, the beast looked at her sadly and he said, Beauty, I can refuse you nothing. I am your slave. So yes, you may go and visit your father, but please come back to me in three weeks. For if you do not, I will die. I cannot live without you. Oh, I, I certainly shall come back in three weeks. I promise, said Beauty. Very well, said the beast. Then... In the morning, take the mirror, look into it, and tell it where you wish to go. And help will be given you. Well, the very next morning, Beauty took the mirror. As soon as she was dressed and had had her breakfast, she took the mirror and she said, I wish to go to my father. Suddenly, she heard the neighing of a horse outside and the tramping of hooves, and she went outside, and she found the same black horse that had brought her to the beast's palace. And she climbed on the horse, and it galloped off as fast as the wind, and before too much longer, she was back at her father's house. Her father was indeed very sick, for he had been so worried about beauty, and he had been working very hard. And so beauty was able to stay and to take care of her father and to help him get better. She found that all of the gold and the jewels and the silver that her fa father had taken back from the beast's house had made her family quite wealthy again, and that her sisters had gotten married to very good wealthy young men. And her brothers, some of them, were thinking about getting married, but the family had stayed in the country, for father had decided he didn't wish to go back to the city. Well, Beauty's sisters came to visit every day, and they were so jealous of their sister for the beautiful dresses that she had and the beautiful jewels that she wore. Clearly, she had done quite well for herself. Her brothers were so happy to have her there, and her father was getting better every single day. But Beauty's sisters, they were so jealous and so unhappy about how their sister had done so much better than they had, that they decided they needed to do something to make the beast angry with her so that he would send her away and she wouldn't have all those wonderful things anymore. And so they forced out big false tears when it came close to Beauty's time to go back to the beast. And they persuaded her and they cried and they begged her to stay longer for they had missed her so terribly much, they said. And father definitely needed her, her there because look at how much so much better he had gotten since she had been home. It took some doing, for Beauty did not want to break her promise to the beast who had been so very kind to her. But eventually her sisters persuaded her to stay a little bit longer, and then a little bit longer, 
and then a little bit longer. And so she stayed past the three weeks and more and a little bit longer until one night Beauty was sleeping and she suddenly found herself back in the palace gardens near the pond, but it didn't look like it had. It looked, it looked a little dirtier and a little shabbier and a little darker. And as she wandered along the side of the pond, suddenly she saw something lying there on the ground. And when she went running up to it, she found that it was the beast. And he was laying there looking as though he were dead. Beauty was so upset, she woke up right away from her sleep. And she thought to herself, oh, my poor beast, what have I done? I broke my promise to him. I told him I would come back after three weeks, and it has been so much longer than that. And without stopping to say goodbye to anyone in her family or to think about the fact that it was the middle of the night, she snatched up the magic mirror from where it lay next to her bed and she ran outside and she said to the mirror, I wish to be with the beast. Instantly, the black horse came running around the corner of the house and she jumped on his back and he rode like the wind back to the palace. When she got to the palace, Beauty ran through the, the, the halls of the palace calling for the beast, but she couldn't find him. And then she thought perhaps he might be out in the garden near the pond like her dream had showed her. And so she went out to the garden and she found the pond and she began running around the edge of the pond trying to find the beast. Finally, she spotted him lying on the ground just as he had been in her dream. And when she ran up to him, she was so frightened for she was sure that he was dead. But when she rolled him over and shook him a little bit, his eyes fluttered and she could see that he was still breathing. And she said, oh beast, I am so sorry. I should not have stayed away for so very long. I, I, am, I will never do it again, I promise, I promise. Please don't die, please don't die. I, I need you to not die for you see, I have realized that I love you and I wish to marry you. The beast's eyes fluttered again, and Beauty turned away with her, with her handkerchief. She went to the side of the lake, and she wet the handkerchief, and she turned back to put the wet cloth on the beast's face. She started back in surprise, for it was not her beast lying there, but the prince from her dreams. She was so very startled, and the prince opened his eyes, and he sat up, and he looked at her, and he said, Beauty, I was the beast. You have freed me from the enchantment, for you see the story that I told you. The old woman who came to the palace that I turned away was a fairy who had come to test me and to see if I was worthy to be a ruler, and I was not. But she was kind enough to not just turn me into a beast and send me out on my own, but to leave me in my own palace However, she turned all of the servants and all of the noblemen and the ladies invisible so that I would be alone. But you, you beauty, you have broken the enchantment. And now, if you will still marry me, even though I am not your beast, I should very much like to marry you and be your husband. And... We should probably go into the palace, for I am sure that all of the servants and the lords and the ladies would love to meet you as well, now that they are no longer invisible. And indeed, Beauty could hear cheering coming from inside the palace, for everyone was so happy to find that they were no longer invisible, and they could see each other in it themselves again. And the prince and Beauty stood up, and Beauty said she would indeed still love to marry the prince. And they went into the palace and they sent for Beauty's father and her brothers and her sisters and they had a grand wedding and they lived very happily. But Beauty's sisters, they were not so happy. You can just imagine how jealous they were to find that their sister had married a prince. A prince who had been very beautiful inside but not outside. And so Beauty found the happiness and the beauty 
that lay within. And that is the story of Beauty and the Beast from France. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you'll come back and join us again on Wednesday at 3 p.m. Central Time. We will have another story for you uh, here from the Milledgeville Public Library of Illinois. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.